Viewers at home, you are welcome to my presentation on capital gain tax. Capital gains tax. In this presentation, I will examine all you need to understand capital gain tax computation. If you are just coming across the YouTube channel for the first time, or if you have not subscribed to my channel previously, please hit the red subscribe button and also turn on the notification bell icon so that you don't miss my upcoming videos. If you are a returning subscriber, I say thank you and God bless you. Capital gain tax will arise where the sales proceed on the disposal of chargeable assets exceed its cost of acquisition. We are the sales proceed from disposal of chargeable assets exceed the cost of acquisition. Then we have the capital gain. Capital gain gains will arise where the sales proceeds from the disposal of chargeable assets exceed its cost of acquisition. Chargeable assets are assets whose disposal will result in chargeable gain. Assets whose, uh, whose disposal will result in chargeable gain, we call it chargeable assets. Chargeable assets. Chargeable assets are all forms of property, whether situated in Nigeria or not. All forms of properties. You know, I've told you there are chargeable assets. I said there are assets whose disposal will result in chargeable gains. I said chargeable assets are all forms of property, whether situated in Nigeria or not. Chargeable assets include all forms of qualifying capital expenditure. All qualifying capital expenditure. It includes foreign currency, any currency other than Nigeria currency. It includes options, options, debts, and incorporate. Incorporate property. These are examples of chargeable assets. When we say incorporate property, incorporate property are fictitious assets. Incorporate property are fictitious assets. They are fictitious assets. Examples include trademark. Trademark. Uh, copyright. Patent. ETC. These are the examples of incorporate property. Chargeable gains. Chargeable gains arises where the sales proceed of the chargeable asset disposed exceed its cost of acquisition and all other incidental expenses. Where the sales proceed 
of the chargeable asset disposed exceed the cost of acquisition and all other incidental expenses. Then we have the chargeable gains. Now, year of assessment. Capital gain is accessible on actual year basis. Actual year basis. That is the year of disposal of dischargeable assets. The year of disposal of the chargeable asset. That is the year in which the capital gain will be accessible for tax purpose. So, I want to consider the format for the computation of capital gain tax. Format. You put the name of the entity. Let us assume you have XYZ Limited Computation Computation of Capital Gains Tax Payable For the year of assessment have to be stated 20XX year of assessment Then you have the sales proceeds. Sales proceeds, the amount realized from the sales of the chargeable asset. Not less allowable expenses. Those expenses incurred in connection with the sales of the chargeable asset. Expenses incurred in connection with the disposal of the chargeable assets that are liable. So you deduct the, that. So after deducting that, you arrive at the net sales proceeds. Net sales proceeds. After deducting the net sales proceeds, you less the cost of acquisition. Cost of acquisition. As part of the cost of acquisition, you have any capitalized expenditure. Capitalized expenditure. Those expenses in Kia in connection with the acquisition of the assets that will help to improve the value of the asset. So, you deduct that you arrive at the capital gain. Capital gain. And you check if there is a rollover relief that is available to the taxpayer. Rollover relief. So the rollover relief, you have the sales uh, lower of lower of these two of these two items. Number one, we have the sales proceeds. Then amount reinvested. Amount reinvested. I will still explain rollover relief in details. You choose the lower of these two. The lower of these two, then you have less cost of acquisition. You less cost of acquisition from the lower of these two. Then you get the amount of rollover relief that is available. You deduct it. After deducting that, you arrive at the chargeable gain. Chargeable gains. From the chargeable gain, you apply your tax rate. Capital gain, tax payable. And the capital gain tax 
is currently at 10%. 10% of this will give you the amount of capital gain tax payable for the year of assessment. Before I take a work example, I want to examine the expenses that are allowable and those expenses that are not allowable for capital gain tax purpose. Allowable expenses. For an expenses to be allowable for capital gain tax purpose, it more, those expenses must be incurred wholly, reasonably, exclusively, and necessarily for the purpose of that shaggyable asset. Now, the allowable expenses include number one, selling expenses. Selling expenses. Selling expenses, examples of selling expenses, we have uh, advertisement, advertisement cost or advertisement expenses. Number two, we have the professional cost, professional cost, professional costs that are liable include, example, we have uh, solicitor's fee, solicitor's Fee. fee, then we have accountant, accountant fee, or accountant fees, then we also have brokerages and estate uh, valuers fee, brokerages, brokerages and estate valuers fee. Then we also have the estate agent commission. Estate agent commission. All these expenses are liable for capital gain tax purpose. Then we have acquisition number three. Acquisition cost. Cost in cure in connection with the acquisition. Of the asset and any cost of refurbishing the asset, refurbishment, refurbishment cost prior to disposal or cost of improving the asset or improvement cost, cost prior to. Disposal. All these expenses are allowable for the computation of capital gain tax. Then we have no allowable expenses. No allowable expenses. All revenue expenditures that have been allowed in the computation of accessible profit under CETA are not allowable in the computation of uh, capital gain tax. Example, Mr. Iyobank, a speculator, undertook the following transactions. On the 15th of July, 2021, purchased a house for 5.5 million euro. He spent 2,350,000 in renovation. On the 21st of March 2022, bought a warehouse for 4 million naira. He renovated it with 1.5 million naira. On the 6th of May 2022, bought 150,000 shares at 17 naira 50 cover per share. On the 31st of July 2022, paid tenement rate of 250,000 naira. On the 10th of October 2022, he sold the house for 14.5 million naira and paid 1 million 450,000 naira as agency fee and 78,000 as advertisement and agreement expenses. He sold the warehouse 
for 8 million naira and paid agency fee of 8 million naira. 800,000 naira. You are required to compute the capital gain tax payable by Mr. Yobog. All expenses in Kyoj are allowable. That is the question. Now, the solution. Solution. The name of the taxpayer is Mr. Iyombok. The computation of capital gain tax payable for I have told you that there is nothing like relevant year of assessment. You have to identify the year of assessment. It's under must. Failure to identify the year of assessment or failure to state the year of assessment in your solution, that amounts to zero marks. No mark will be awarded for failure to state the year of assessment in your solution. Capital gain tax is accessible on actual year basis. That is the year of disposal of the chargeable asset. Now back to the question. You try to identify the year the assets were disposed. On the 10th of October, he sold the house for 40... 10th of October 2022, he sold the house for 14.5 million. So the, the house was sold in 2022. Therefore, 2022 will be the year of assessment. Remember, capital gain tax is accessible on actual year basis. So, now, for 2022 year of assessment, or 2022 tax year, now, the first house that we're disposed is the first asset, Shady Vassal sold his house. Now we have the sales proceeds. Sales proceeds. How much is the sales proceeds of the house? He sold the house for 14.5 million. The proceed is 14.5 million naira. Less allowable. Expenses. The expenses in Kyoto, in connection with the sales of the chargeable assets. Those expenses that are allowable. Those one in Kyoto, in connection with the sales of the chargeable asset. If you look at 15th of July 2021, we have the acquisition. So the expenses they are in, were in cure in connection with the acquisition. On the 21st of March 2022, this is purchase as well, which is acquisition. This is also a purchase. Pay tenement rate. Tenement rate is an allowable expenses under CETA. It's a revenue expenditure. I've told you that those revenue expenditure that are allowable in the computation or for the computation of adjusted profit will not be allowable for capital gain tax purpose. So in that case, this 250,000 Naira will not be allowable. It is allowable under CETA in the competition of adjusted profit. It does not relate to the acquisition. Tenement rate does not in, relate to the acquisition or disposal of the chargeable asset. This tenement rate paid does not relate to the acquisition or disposal of chargeable asset. Therefore, it is not allowable for capital gain tax purpose. He sold the house for 14.5 million naira and paid 1 million 50,000 as agency fee. So we have agency fee, agency 
fee of uh, one million four fifty thousand. One million four fifty thousand. Then, add 78,000 as advertisement and agreement expenses. Advertisement of 78,000 Naira. Back to the question. He sold the warehouse. This is a little warehouse. You know, we are dealing with the house on its own. Therefore, the allowable expenses incurred in connection with the house is we have 1,450,000 plus 78,000. That is total 1,528,000. By the time we deduct the allowable expenses from the sales proceed of 14.5 million, then we have the net sales proceed of 12 million 972,000. That is the net sales proceed. Net sales proceeds. Then we now less cost of acquisition you know we are dealing with house sales of the house as at the time of acquisition of the house now back to the question purchase the house for 5.5 million the cost of acquisition is 5.5 million he spent 2 million 350 thousand in renovation the amount spent on renovation we helped in improving the, co the house. So this is an improvement expenses. Therefore, it should be capitalized. We are going to add it to the cost of acquisition. Less cost of acquisition, we have the purchase price cost. Our purchase cost of 5.5 million. It was bought for 5.5 million. And uh, 2 million 350,000 was spent on renovation. We have renovation, renovation, two million three fifty thousand. After you that, this will be capitalized because it improves the house. Therefore, five point five million plus two million three fifty thousand. That gives us seven million. 850,000. By the time you deduct it from the net sales proceed of 12 million 972,000, then you have 5 million 122,000. That is the capital gains. Capital gains. Then capital gain tax now. Gain tax at 10%. 10% of this will be 512200. 512,200. That is the capital gain tax on the house. After the house, the second asset that was sold is warehouse. He sold the warehouse for eight million. So we want to compute the capital gain tax on warehouse. So we have sales proceeds. He sold the warehouse for eight million. Eight million naira. So what is there any allowable expenses in here in connection with the sales of the warehouse? He sold the warehouse for eight million naira and paid agency fee of eight hundred thousand. Agency fee of eight hundred thousand. If you subtract eight hundred thousand. 
from 8 million, you have 7.2 million. That is the net sales proceeds. From the net sales proceeds, you less cost of acquisition. As at the time the warehouse was bought, how much was expended in connection with the acquisition of the warehouse? Bought a warehouse for 4 million naira. He renovated it with 1.5 million. So the 1.5 million spent on renovation is a capital expenditure because it has improved the warehouse. Therefore, that should be capitalized. It should be added to the cost of 4 million, making 5.5 million. So we now have purchase cost of 4 million. It was bought for 4 million naira. Then we have renovation. 1.5 million naira was expended in connection with the renovation of the warehouse. So you now have 5.5 million naira. If you deduct 5.5 million from, from 7.2 million, you'll be left with 1.7 million. That is the capital gain. 1.7 million capital gain of 1.7 million. So capital gain tax gain tax at 10% will be 10% of 1.7 million will be 170,000 naira. That is the solution to the question. So this is the end of the part one of my presentation on capital gain tax. In part two, I will examine the connection parties, transactions, partial disposal, and I will also examine the rollover relief. Thanks for watching, Ezekiel.